Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt and it's from a pattern that's called Crescendo. This is a Cozy Quilt Designs pattern and I am so excited to get started with it. So this is a jelly roll pattern and I love the colors that are showing on the pattern there. So I picked a jelly roll that has similar colors. This is a Bolly Pop from Hoffman Fabrics, it's called Sand Castle, and the browns are very close to what's used here, but there's some aqua blues, and we're gonna add those in, and I think that will be very interesting to see how the quilt turns out with the blue added. The only other things we need to get started are some background, that's this light area here, and then the side setting triangles. So I've picked out a couple of batiks that will look really good for those areas. We've got this beautiful, subtle light background there and this very warm floral for the side setting triangles. The pattern does come with multiple sizes. Now I'm going to make the size that's shown on the cover there, which is the throw size. So I'm going to need 24 of the jelly roll strips, a yard of background, a yard for side setting triangles. We're also going to add some borders. We're going to need backing and binding, but we'll worry about those later. The first step is to pick out the 24 strips that we're going to use. Now I like all of the fabrics, but these light ones, they will not have enough contrast between themselves and the background. So that's the first thing we'll do is put these really light ones aside. And we may have just about 24 left. These will all be perfect. The next step is to cut each one in half. So here's the fold here. I'm just putting my scissors in there and cutting it along the fold. And I'm gonna do that with every strip. Our next step is to cut the background. And I can't give you the sizes because it's not my pattern, but I've made a lot of cozy quilts patterns. And one thing I love about them is that the directions are so easy to follow. Okay, the cutting is done. Now let's take all these jelly roll strips right to the sewing machine. All we have to do is take two of the strips, two different ones, and sew them together side by side. So let's get a brown one, and then we'll get a different color here. Put them right sides together. Use a quarter inch seam, and just make sure that we don't stretch either one as we sew. Once you get to the end, you want to finger press the seam allowance to one side. So I'm gonna press all of the seams to the right here. And I'm gonna take all the rest of my strips and I'm going to sew them in pairs just like this. All the pairs are stitched up and I'm just going to give them a quick pressing. We're heading back to the machine with all the iron strip sets and our background. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take two of these guys and we're gonna get two that have different fabrics. So I've got four different fabrics. I'm gonna put them right sides together and I'm going to stitch down both sides. So they are exactly the same size, so it's pretty easy to line everything up. And I'm gonna stitch down one side and back up the other. So I'm going to make five of these units. There's the fifth one. Now we're going to take these background strips, one of these and one of the strip sets. And we're just gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna sew down the one side and back up the other. And I'm gonna do that with all the rest of them. Once these are all done, 
we're going to cut these into squares and there's a fun way to do that. I'm going to use something called the strip tube ruler. This is a triangle ruler and it's got all these lines drawn on it and we're going to use the five and a half inch line and we're going to put it on the stitching line not on the raw edge on your stitches so i've used white thread so we can see it a little better but this line is right on that stitching line and now i'm going to make two cuts now because we had this stitched on both sides that is going to be a square when we open it up. And now we're going to take the ruler and spin it around. And we're gonna use that same five and a half inch line. And we're going to put it on the top stitching line there. We're gonna make sure that it's lined up here. Now, sometimes you might have to make a fresh cut. You might have to move it over a little and straighten that up. It just depends. It looks pretty straight there. Now I'm going to slice on this side And now I've got a second square and I can spin this around one more time and get a third square. But this time I can't move it all the way over because of the way it's cut there. So I'm gonna to have to slide it over just a little bit and do two cuts again. This one and this one. So go ahead and do that with all of your strip units. I've got all of the tubes cut up now. These ones that have some background, these ones that were just all strips, and we want to iron them. So I'm gonna take this one with the background and put it with the strips, the printed strips, down on the ironing board. Now, I like to peel this open, and I'm doing that carefully so I can keep this seam nice and straight. I don't want it to bow or sink there. Give it a nice pressing and then the last step is to cut off these little dog ears. That's these extra pieces here that are sticking off and I'm just going to trim them even. So all of these with the background have the seam allowance pressed toward the background. Now these guys here, it doesn't matter. You just open it up because it's all strips. So we're just going to press to one side and trim off the dog ears. I'm back with everything at the sewing machine and we're going to take three of these blocks that have background and one of these blocks and we're going to make them into one bigger block. So this is how they're going to be facing. We've got the three backgrounds over there and then this guy here. And if you don't like the colors that are together, you could spin that guy around there. So now I'm going to sew it together. So let's turn this one like that, that one like that. And we don't have to match any seams here. Everything is exactly the same size, making it very easy to stitch up. Now I'm just gonna slide this one over. And again, you don't have to match any seams. The blocks are designed so that nothing meets up except the edges here. Now let's press this seam allowance to the right. And I'm gonna be very gentle here to make sure, I'm finger pressing it, but I'm pretty much just smashing it because I don't wanna stretch it because these edges here, they're bias edges. They're not straight grains and they will stretch if you pull them. So this one's going that way. We'll press this one the opposite way, which is that direction. And now we'll stitch this seam down the middle. So you do need to match that middle intersection right here. Now mine are attached, the string is still there in the middle, the thread. So if you want to, you can open it up, peel it back to make sure you've got everything lined up. So here is what the block looks like. Let me just press it just a little bit there. So we're gonna take all our blocks and make these bigger blocks. So you can see here, none of the seam allowances line up. They're not supposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch all these into these. 
Now there's a little bit of a knack to ironing these. I like to start out with them still folded in half like this. And I'm just going to heat it up just a little bit with my iron. And this is relaxing those seams there. Now I'm going to peel this open and I'm just going to press down right in the middle, right at the top and right at the bottom, making sure my seam allowances my seam allowances are going the way I want, which is that way. Now, I'm going to make sure that I always iron in the direction of the straight grain, which is not this way. It's the diagonal of the block. So I'm just gonna put my iron here and pull this way a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this way. And that is going to keep my block square. Now this is one of my favorite parts of making a quilt. We have a simple block, but we're going to turn these and lay these out, and we're gonna see another pattern emerge. So we've got three on the bottom with the dark going like that. Now we're gonna go up the sides, and the dark half is gonna be facing out. These go like this, and I'm not worrying right now about what fabric is where. I'm just trying to get the blocks laid the way they go. Now this one is gonna get turned like that, this one turned like that. There, that's looking a little better. Now we're going to fill in with these guys. And we've got dark towards the bottom here. And the further you go, the easier it gets to get these all straight. Let's see, dark towards the top here. And these last four go in the middle. And there is a diagram in the pattern. I'm not just doing this from memory. So if you look at the pattern, it makes it very easy to get this laid out. All right, that is all the patchwork blocks. And you can see that we've got these parts missing around the edges. So let's get the pieces cut for those areas. Now for the side setting triangles, we're going to cut some squares and then we're going to cut those squares along both diagonals. And so I get the question a lot, why do you cut them along both diagonals? You just need triangles. You could just cut a smaller square and cut it once. And the reason is because we want the grain, the straight grain, to go around the outside of the quilt. And then it won't be biased around the outside of the quilt and it won't stretch. It makes the quilt more stable around those outer edges so we can sew the borders on without having a lot of rippling. So this is what I'm talking about here. This outer edge is a straight grain and that's going to go around the outside of our quilt and help keep it stable. Now for the four outside corners, I'm only going to cut it once. I'm not going to cut it again. And that's because we have a straight grain here on both the outside edges and that will finish up the four corners of the quilt. All right, now we have a nice rectangular quilt top. Now keep in mind, since the blocks are on point, the rows are diagonal. So this is the first row this is the second row, but you make it just like a traditional quilt. You do it row at a time, stitch all those rows together. So I'm gonna do that and then put the borders on and get it onto the quilting machine. The quilt is all loaded up and we need to pick a thread color. There's lots of neutral shades here. Lots of them would work, any of these would work. So the first one I thought was this kind of aqua color. So. It only shows a little bit there, and I think it's gonna blend in all the patchwork. That would be a good choice. Now this actually is going to turn out a little darker. It shows a little bit more there. It's gonna blend in the patchwork. If you wanna do something extreme, and you could with this pattern, because it's got these nice light triangles, you could go with the dark brown, and that would be a good choice. For instance, if you wanted to quilt in flowers and you wanted them to show prominently. This is what I thought I was going to use because it's so neutral. Again, it's going to show a little there, but it blends really well. And this nice medium brown, hmm, 
that one isn't going to show much. I really think I'm going to go with the light aqua today. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use this one called Rosebuds. It doesn't look very flowery, just a hint of flowers, and I like that little leaf, and it's a nice open pattern. I'm going to not do a lot of quilting. I'm going to keep it fairly open on this quilt. I've got the crescendo quilt all done and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I love that dark aqua border around there. I think that really pulls out the blue aqua colors from in the patchwork. Now I did make one small change from the pattern. The pattern called for this to be cut two and a half inches, but I only cut it two inches. So it's just a little bit smaller because it's such an intense color. I wanted it to be slightly smaller. Now the quilting, you can see it here in this light area, but it's understated and I think it looks really nice. And the backing, so now you can see it because I used blue thread on that camel colored watercolor batik on the back side. Now it turned out 55 by 69 inches, so it's a nice throw size. This would also make a really nice wall hanging. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're gonna have a quilt to give away. This is a nice wall hanging size quilt. And this is a pattern called Baby Steps. It was made with little one and a half inch strips. I think I used a honey bun. I made this probably about a year ago. We have it as a free pattern on our website if you wanna make one. But today you can win this one and it's very easy to enter. All you do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway and then you enter just your email address and your name, and we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.